Let's start with the first one, which is a little bit of a fail. Hi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Mathilde. I'm a French beginner knitter and today is episode 10 of my knitting podcast. If you're not new here, then welcome back. Thank you for joining again. I hope you appreciate this podcast. Um, this is where I talk about all of my current whips that I have on my needles. Um, I've got three at the moment. I also have three finished objects to show you, which don't get used to that because it's just that I wrapped up two knits at the same time. And then I've got um, one finished object, which you've never seen before because I um, cast it on and finished it in a week, uh, which honestly, I really needed uh, a quick knit, but we'll talk more about that uh, in a moment. Then I've got some acquisitions and some future plans that I want to um, have your opinion on and at the end I'm going to show you two prizes that you can enter to win in the comments down below because I want to celebrate having a thousand subscribers on this channel. Um, I've passed that milestone a couple of weeks ago I think but uh, I really wanted to have a podcast in which I showed you some prizes that you can win and I hope you're going to be excited about those but I think we should just dive into my finished object because as I said I've got three to talk about so let's start with the first one which is a little bit of a fail. So the first finished object is going to be my Moonset Tea by Ozera. This is a pattern by Ozera that features this really pretty V like polo neck kind of thing. Um, is short sleeved and features some eye cord edges. I think it's supposed to be knit on 3mm needles and I knitted it on 3.5mm needles and the yarn that I use is, um, I don't have any left, I mean I do have a small amount left actually. I do have this much left of it but this is a hand dyed um, skein of a mix of alpaca, baby alpaca, cashmere and maybe nylon. Uh, I don't really remember the composition but I've talked about it before in my podcast and as always I'll link everything down below, the patterns and the yarn that I used and you can always check my Ravelry if you want more details on the yarn that I use or sometimes I've got project notes. Not always because sometimes I'm a bit lazy but most of the time, uh, when it's something that I've, I think is really could be really helpful to someone, then I do have some project notes. Um, but anyway, yeah, this is the yarn that I use. This is by L'Atelier uh, Teinture, which is a French hand dyer. And this is her Caris Wing Ring in the colorway Nui, I think. I've got 30 grams left out of 100 gram skeins, and I used two. So I've, I used... 170 grams. Why is this a fail you may ask? That's because because of that I only had 200 gram skeins. I think that meant I had 800 meters and I think the pattern suggests 840 for the size I knit but more for the size that I should have knit which is the third size. So I need size 2 and it is obviously too small because it's not made for my size. Um, it's definitely too small on the shoulders, which you'll see in the video. Um, I think like I can, I can wear it, but it just looks really tight and not in a purposeful way. So I'm not sure how much wear I'll get out of it. Yeah, I'm a bit disappointed to be honest, but that's my own fault. It's not at all the pattern fault. Uh, I should have just sized up and, you know, if I had had um, less yarn, maybe I could have made the sleeves a little bit shorter or the body even, um, you know. Or I should have just chosen a different pattern where I could have used all of the skeins that I had. But yeah. I'm a little bit disappointed, uh, but it's okay, you know, that can happen. Um, I think last time I showed it to you, I didn't have any of the sleeves and I was like on the body maybe. 
and so I did the I called bind off using a size needle up so I think if I use the 3.5 for the body probably a 4 millimeter needle and you can see that it's a bit loose but I would rather have it be too loose than um, too tight which is the issue that I had with my cumulus plus which we'll talk about after and I did the same thing for the sleeves and again you can clearly see that it's a bit loose also I didn't follow the pattern when it came to picking up the stitches for the sleeves because she said to pick up with a needle size uh, smaller so I think probably 2.75 and because I'm a tight knitter I was worried about what that would be like so I just used the same needle size but I think it looks a bit weird I don't know if it's the I don't know if I think I don't know I don't know if it's when I blocked it I don't know if it's because I picked up too many stitches or not you know with the correct needle size but I, I just think they look a bit weird at least when they lay when I lay the garment down to take pictures it's <laughs> not looking great so I haven't taken any pictures of it because of that also when I blocked it I really pinned this down because otherwise it looked a bit weird but I think that looks even weirder I don't know I but at least when I wear it it's nice I haven't worn it I finished this I've got the date here I, yeah I finished this about two weeks ago and I haven't worn it uh, because of the weather it's been kind of warm not too warm we've had a lot of rainy days it's been a weird summer but I think that's been the gist of it everywhere in Europe and also when I wear it for a few seconds it, it hitches a bit so I'm a bit worried about wearing it you know for example when I'm at work for a full day where I won't be able to change into something else if I if I find it too itchy but then at home I don't really feel like wearing it um, so yeah I I might frog this but I think I'm gonna wait a little bit until like late autumn to see if I grab this and wear it a bit more or like wear it at all and if I don't there's no point in me keeping this either I'll gift it to a friend or I will frog it and it's something else with the yarn but yeah you know that can happen sometimes with knitting you it takes you three four months to knit something and the end result just isn't what you expected but you know talking about the pattern the pattern was great i really liked it the one thing that i think i would have liked was a pickup rate for the stitches for the sleeves there wasn't any you just said pick up x number of stitches and that was it um so i think i kind of struggled and had to do it two or three times to get the right number or maybe I even just uh, you know picked up more and then decreased the round after maybe that's why they look a bit weird I can't really remember what I did but otherwise I love the construction of it and honestly I might make it again in the right size uh, or even the pullover I know there's a pullover version with long sleeves um, I think that would I think honestly if it wasn't for the sizing issue I would really like it I would just need to understand how I could do the I-cord edges you know so that they're just a tiny bit tighter um, because right now I just think I think with the sleeves it's okay but for the bottom of the body it's maybe just a tiny bit too loose so that's it for the moonset tee We'll see if I get a lot of wear out of it. So now let's move on to my second finished object, which is not as much of a fail. It's actually, uh, I really enjoy it. This is the Cumulus Blouse by Petit Knit. Um, this is knit using Phil Colin Atelia in the colorway Ice Blue or 340. Um, this is 70% kid mohair and 30% silk and I used six canes of this and I had one left over which is great because I'm going to be able to use it with got some 
uh, Sunday by Summer's Garden in like the above the clouds or one of their ice blues which would pair really really well with this I would just have to see if that's enough for a beanie I don't think it is but I could just buy one more and we'll see um, but that was the one that I used. I really love the color. I held two strands together for the Cubans blouse and I've been able to wear this next to skin no problem. Uh, it is very warm so I've not been able to wear it a ton but I've worn it at least three times since I finished it which again was probably like two, two and a half weeks ago. So two things about this. I wish the v-neck was a bit lower. I think it sits a bit too high on my neck or like on my collarbone. Um, I like it, but I just wish it was a tiny bit lower. So if I were to knit this again, which honestly I could see myself making it again, I would um, make it a bit, like follow instructions probably for a bigger size. And then the one issue that I had was with the I-cord edges. So in the last pod podcast, I had finished the I-cord edges for the, or like I-cord bind off for the body. And it was really tight. I had followed Petit Knit's um, instructions, which were to use, I think, the same needle size as the body, but also to make some decreases as you were binding off, which is a really great technique. But because I'm a tight knitter, it was just, I, I could pull it on, but it just singed in around my waist and it was just too tight and I didn't enjoy that. So I think that was around the same time that I was supposed to bind off on the moonset tee. So I bound off on that using a size uh, bigger. And then what I did for this is I did the bind off for the sleeves, which I used a size bigger to do. And that is much better. It's not tight at all. It's not as loose as the moonset tee. So maybe it's also in a matter of what yarn you use I'm not sure it's not too tight but it's also not, not too loose so I did this for the both sleeves I also did the eye cord for the neck which I think turned out really good um, again a size needle bigger but didn't do any decreases and then for the body I, I frogged my bind off, which honestly wasn't too bad. I was really scared that, you know, being two strands of mohair, it would, you know, take a while. But actually it was great. I mean, it wasn't a great experience, but it was fine. And then I bind off again using a size bigger, but doing some decreases. Kind of randomly, I didn't follow the decrease ra um decrease rate that Petit Knit instructed but I was worried that it would be as loose as the Moonset Tee and I didn't want that. I think this is still a tiny bit tighter than I would have liked so what I might do next time would be to use either the same needle size without any decreases or a needle size up but doing like four decreases max. I think I did like every 12 or 16 stitches or something uh, but kind of randomly so maybe I did too many and then the last thing that I want to talk about is when I weaved in my ends I think you could probably see it here can you see it I'm not sure it's picking up on camera here you can see here kind of see the stitches which or like the fact what uh, the method that I used to weave in my ends is a like the duplicate stitch method but I think on certain yarns or like with certain yarns it can really show which is a bit of a shame uh, I use that also with my next finished object and again I think you can definitely tell uh, so let me know if you have any other methods to weave in your hands for like some projects like this where you can clearly see the like double layer of yarn and also like my stitches are not perfect and you know more hair isn't really forgiving especially like here you can see yeah but that's just me noticing it and I think it's fine I think 
this is a really lovely color on me and I really love it and again it's not been too warm so I've been able to wear it and the fact that I've already worn it like three times in two or three weeks means that I will I think I will get a lot of wear out of it which is great um, I do wear this top underneath it because otherwise I think it's a bit too see-through um, but I guess it also depends on which colorway you use and like maybe how tight your tension is I don't know uh, but yeah I was a little bit worried that it was going to be too itchy and it's not at all so I know I'm not very sensitive to mohair I think I'm more sensitive to alpaca so it's just a me thing but this mohair is really soft so if you want to try a different mohair from what you usually do I really recommend this one I'm gonna definitely use it again in the future uh, I don't know with which product yet but it's on my list uh, to try with like a merino to see how I like that this took me like a month and, a, and one week to finish which I'm pretty pleased about I don't want all of my knits to be quick and easy knits but once in a while it's nice to have one of those. The next pattern and the last of my finished object that I want to share with you is my camisole number 10. I shared in my last video, which was my summoning plans and inspirations, that I really wanted to make this camisole. I had seen uh, Alina from the Norwegian Knitter, uh, which I will link down below in the description because I really love her podcast. Um, I had seen her make a an always camisole by Garner Slicked which looks very similar to this one and was really really pretty uh, but the size range isn't the best and when uh, my favorite things knitwear came out with this one which has a bit more of a size range it's still not great but it did have like at least two or three more sizes um, I thought I would try knitting this one this is a design that I cast on on a Friday and finished off the next Friday and I didn't really even knit that much on it during the weekend. I only knit like four or five hours on it. And then it was mostly during the week. And it just flew by. And honestly, I chose that pattern like also for that reason. Because I really needed a quick, satisfying project after my moonset tea. Which kind of put me in a bad mood. Not a bad mood, but made me kind of sad. Um, so this is the finished result. And I really love it. I really love the um, construction of it. I love the neckline on me. I think it looks really good. If I do say so myself. I liked that I use a white yarn for it. Because it makes it so much easier to pair with my um, trousers or skirts. I don't wear a lot of skirts. But like tr skirts or, or shorts. Um... Again, I've had that issue with the, like, you can clearly see here, I think. Yeah, you can clearly see. Also, the yarn is kind of peeking through. I've got to go back and cut it a bit more. I did block this. Um, okay. Let me talk about the yarn first, and then I'll talk more about the pattern itself. I used Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the colorway cream. This is what I've got left. Uh, this is 100% pure silk so I've got almost a full skein left I've got 40 grams left the pattern said to that for my size which is size M uh, I should use four skeins of pure silk so that that's what I bought I think I could, could have gotten away with three maybe uh, but I'll definitely find a use for this uh, probably in the future I've used that yarn before for my camisole number four that I knitted last year and I really enjoyed that. You For this top you have to hold it double. Uh, so I was a, a little bit worried that it was going to be, you know, pretty warm to wear. But I've worn it twice already. I wanted to wear it at like a work thing uh, on Wednesday night. Yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday night. But it was actually too cold so I had to wear my... Uh, swim, uh, no, my normal sweater above it so that can tell you how uh, cold it was so I you know I can't really say how warm it kept me but then I did wear it a little bit on the following day and today a little bit 
um, to go vote and there were a bit warmer days and it honestly felt very light, very drapey, it was fine. It wasn't a particularly warm day, there can definitely be warm days so we'll see how I feel when it's like 30 degrees but I think it's still a very good summer yarn, at least for me. Um, yeah, I was supposed to use another yarn, which I've talked about, I think, in my summer knitting plans, um, which was 100% cotton, and I just did not love the feeling of it. I've since given it away. Um, and yeah, I would just rather buy a yarn that I know that I like, you know. I mean, I could have tried it with that different yarn, because it only took me a week, but it's still a week of knitting. Still a lot. Anyways about the pattern itself. So the way you start this, knitting this, is you cast on. The pattern recommends that you cast on with a smaller needle size so that it's, you know, tight. But because I'm a tight knitter, I was like, I do not want this to be too tight. I would rather, you know, it be too loose. And if I want to, you know, tighten it a bit, I can always do an eye cord um, edging. Which she, do, she does recommend if you knit it too loosely. Uh, so yeah, I cast on with the size needle size bigger. I used, I didn't say for all of these. I think I said it for the moon set. Yeah, I used 3.5mm instead of the 3. For the cumulus blouse, I used a 5mm needle instead of the 4.5, I think. And for this, I used a 5mm. I used a 5.5 instead of the 5mm needle, I think. And yeah, so I use 5.5, then you join in the round uh, directly, and then you work this increases just for the shoulders in here. And once you've reached the number of increases that you're supposed to do for your size, you split for the front and the back so you put your front stitches on hold knit the back panel then put the stitches on hold and then pick up the ones for the front again and knit the front panel they're exactly the same there's no short row shaping um but i think actually it's fine i haven't had any trouble when wearing this you know feeling a bit uncomfortable um, and then you, once you've done the armhole increases, you join again in the round and then you just knit, 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 knit until you do your bind off. I just did a regular bind off. Um, I did use a needle size bigger for that because again, uh, when I bind off, it's usually pretty tight and I didn't want this to be too tight. But yeah, it's very straightforward, but so satisfying to knit. Um, there is a little bit of issues, I think, with me, but also maybe a little bit of the yarn. So when I do these, like, I, I don't think you have an underarm stitch to add. You just join directly. This is what it creates for me. I just do not know how to make that tighter. I'm trying to show you the other arm, arm, arm hole, but yeah, again. And then again for the bind off, I had that same issue. Which is a little bit annoying. It's fine, but it is a little bit annoying. And then my cat, when I was wearing it, uh, decided to that he didn't want to hug me anymore, which is fine, but he did mess up my uh, top a little bit here and here. Which is fine, it's not his fault, but I don't really know how to fix that. And this is, for me, this is the front, because in the back you've got that duplicate stitching that you can clearly see, which is a bit annoying. So I could wear this in the front, but yeah. But it's fine, I'm going to find a way to fix it, and I'm going to wear it a lot, I think. Uh, I'm already debating knitting another one in another colorway but I'm gonna hold off on that for a little bit because I don't have the yarn for it I don't have another pure silk um, quantity I do have some pure silk left of her I think maybe 20 grams in 
dusty olive. So maybe what I could do, is it, is it dusty olive? No, dusty artichoke. Um, but I don't really want a camisole number 10 in dusty artichoke. I think I would like one in black, to be honest. But yeah, I don't have the yarn for it. I've got other yarns, summer yarns that I've got to use before this summer ends. I mean, if I don't use them, it's fine. I'll use them next year, but it's not my priority. But we'll see like in August if I've got one camisole done and another on the go. I might, you know, just need a quick one. So overall, this, you know, is a bit of a mixed review. I really enjoyed... Uh, two of my finished objects and the other one we'll see if I frog it or not. So now let's move on to my whips. I've got two whips that you've seen already and one new whip which is actually a test knit which I'm really excited for. I realized when I was editing my last podcast that I really breezed through the details of the book club cardigan so I'm gonna try I think I was just too excited about the cowl uh, but I'm gonna try to talk a little bit more about the construction and everything in this video but first let's talk about the storm sweater by Petit Knit so I'm using a uh, pure gint by Saint Mescan in a Petit Knit colorway which is almond or uh, 2511 which is a like pinkish beige which I'm still unsure whether I like or not the color of it but we'll see when I like block it and when I actually wear it this is 100% Norwegian wool and it is 50 grams for approximately 91 centimeters so it is a DK weight yarn uh, I really like it's a bit of a rustic wool but it feels nice and it's really great for you know stitch definition which this pattern has a lot of. I'm still unsure whether I like this yarn. I think I'll see when I block it and when I actually wear it. But you know, whenever someone raves about pigment, I'm like, I don't know if I feel the same. We'll see. This is the progress that I have on the Storm sweater. So since last time I have bound off the body, I've done an Italian bind off and I've also knit the color which I think looks really good I'm really proud of it and I've started a sleeve so this is a drop shoulder uh, Oliver texture design that's very oversized I think it's supposed to be about have 20 centimeters of positive ease this definitely has a lot of positive ease on me I think this is one of the first times that a garment has the positive like the amount of positive ease that it's supposed to have. I think I've been really bad at uh, swatching and making sure my, that my gauge is right. But we'll talk more about that a bit later. Uh, but I think for this one it's okay. So you start by knitting the back panel, I think. Uh, I think you do some German short rows. And then you pick up the stitches for the front panel and then you knit. You pick up the stitches for the right panel and then you join in the round just here with casting on stitches for the neckline and then you just join uh, the front panel up until you can join under the arms for the to like join in the round and then you just knit 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 I used a little size smaller for the uh, ribbing which is just one by one rib and then I did an Italian bind off because that's just what I like uh, when I had finished the body, I knit the color, which is like a double folded color, and it's got the technique that Petit Knit does, which uh, has like a pearl row. I think you can see. And then you just knit, when you fold it down, you knit it together with the cast on edges, like the live stitches. And yeah, I think it looks great. And then I just picked up for the sleeve two days ago uh, what I really like is that you start off with this you know garter stitch kind of thing which you do have in between each motif on the body and I think that looks really pretty I really like that and I especially like the shoulder detail like how you have that here and then it joins here I don't know I think that looks really pretty 
so let me try it on for you. Okay, I've taken off the mic, but this is, this is very oversized, but I think it's gonna be great. I think also the sleeves are gonna be pretty big, which is something that I really like. I think the color looks absolutely stunning. And then shoulder detail, maybe not the best with this. Maybe with the sleeve it's a bit better. Oh, I think that looks pretty. I love that. Let me know what you think about the color on me. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, but then again, I'm just seeing myself in the camera. So <laughs> maybe not great. Um, but yeah, I think the fit of this will be perfect. Exactly what I want. I did uh, basically follow the... So you you have a chart for the body that you can follow. And then when you reach the last, you know, pattern, you've got this pattern and then this one, this one. And I think another one. You have three or four. You've got four. But this, 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 and this, and then you can kind of repeat them. And so when you reach the end of the chart, she tells you uh, if you want a longer body, you can add, you know, this amount. But you have to end on this. Like, you don't have to, but she recommends that. So I looked at her pictures to see on which chart, pattern chart, she ended. And she had one more than I did. But if I were to add one more, it would be very long. You know, I think it would be too long. It already reaches like way past my waist. My waist is here. Then you've got my hips. And then it kind of reaches below my like pockets of my jeans. And I think if I were to add one more, it would have been way too long. Um, I didn't want it to be too short because this is an oversized sweater. But I obviously did not want it to be too uh, long as well. So yeah, hopefully this was the right choice. I think I will have a better understanding of how it will fit when I finish the sleeve. Uh, which hopefully I will soon. But I have a lot of things I want in it, so we'll see. Uh, one thing that I did that I forgot to mention was that I used a needle size bigger for the bind off of the collar. I've had issues in the past where the bind off was too tight and someone, I'm so sorry I don't remember the, your username, but I think one or two people um, suggested that I use a little size bigger for the bind off and it's been great. It is way more stretchy, I can definitely fit my head through easily, so that's definitely a modification that I'll make in the future and that I have to make for a couple of other knits where the bind off is a bit too tight um, so for one particular one which is has been hibernating for a while and lastly I forgot to mention in the last podcast when I joined in the round under the arms for some reason I had two less two fewer stitches than I was supposed to have which I did not realize up until uh, this chart because for here and here, two stitches less, you don't really notice it. But here you really need to have the correct number of stitches. So I, maybe you can see that I increased two stitches in the body. So one on this side and one on the other side. Um, so that I would have enough for here. But I think just two stitches is okay. Uh, I was just way too lazy to go all the way back here and had you know two stitches more wherever I'm not sure what happened I think maybe I just forgot to do an increase at some point for the probably the armholes um, I didn't have any issues picking up stitches for the sleeves so I don't know I don't know what happened uh, but otherwise the pattern is very clear there's some charts so if you've never used chart before, I feel like this one is a pretty good one to start with. It's a fairly easy one. I think that's all I've got to say. I'm hoping to finish it by next podcast. If I don't, I will finish it right after it. But I do have, as I said, a test knit that I want to finish quite soon. And I do have the book club cardigan, which I want to, you know, progress 
through. So let's talk about that one. So just before we talk about that cardigan, let me just show you the product bag that I'm using for it. This is a bucket bag. Let me close it. That I've asked one of my best friends to knit. Her shop is Mercury Studio on Instagram. I will link it down below. And I basically asked her for another bucket bag. She's made two for me so far. She's made this huge one in a fishy pattern, gingham pattern, which I really like. And she's also made this smaller one, which again, I, I use a lot for like summer knits or socks or beanies. And this one is the latest one. I really wanted a, co a corduroy um, I never know what that's called. Fabric. And I also asked her for some handles as well as uh, these strings so that I can, you know, either bring it with me uh, like this or sometimes I like to use those drawstrings as like like this so that I can bring it with me uh, wherever. Uh, the first one has pockets inside but the second one this one and this one, they don't, but I don't really use the pockets inside. Um, I use them to put like the labels of the yarns that I use, but that's it. <laughs> if you're interested in this, stay tuned till the end so that you can maybe win one. Not saying anything more. Let's talk about my whips before that. So, um... This is an ad, I guess, because the pattern was gifted to me by Sari Nordlin for the Nice Along, which I'll talk in a minute about. And the yarn was sponsored by uh, Derum Natura for the Nice Along as well. So the Book Club Cardigan Cal is a Nice Along that I'm running with, or like I'm co-hosting with um, Sarah from Two Pearls in a Pod uh, and, and Sandra from End the Knit on Instagram. So I'll link every like both of their profiles down below, as well as uh, the Two Pearls in a Pod podcast channel, which if you if you've not checked out before, uh, their videos are amazing. So I really recommend. This is a cal that is running up until the tenth of August. Uh, to participate, you just have to cast on and uh, share a picture of your whip on Instagram using the correct hashtags and. Um, mentioning at least one of us so that we can see the post more easily. Everything is mentioned uh, on either of our Instagrams. And there's also a group chat that's been amazing. There's more than 150 people in it and everyone is sharing uh, their knits or what they're reading because that's one thing that you can do for the cal as well is share uh, what you're currently reading. Um, you know, talking about uh, their pets or their travels. And it's, yeah, it's been really, really great. Everyone is so lovely. We're also thinking about doing a uh, knit and chat video call. So again, if you're interested in that, you can uh, send either one of us a message on Instagram to be included in the group chat. And we'd love to have you. There's a, you know, seven, eight prizes to win uh, in this call. So yeah, it's been, it's really great. Um, but let's talk more about the pattern itself because last time I forgot. <laughs> I am knitting this using, let's talk about the yarn first. Again, this yarn was sponsored by Dero Natura. Uh, they have sent me their Ulysse, which is a sport weight and Berenice, which is a lace weight, both in the colorway Poivre Sel. Ulysse is 100% wool and it is 185 meters for 50 grams and Berenice is 55% super kid mohair, 25% silk and 20% wool and it is 210 meters for 25 grams. And it is quite soft but also has a... I don't know, it definitely has a different feel like to for example this mohair definitely feels more toothy maybe is the word I'm looking for I don't know but it feels really really nice I am knitting this in this size 2 for my best friend Justine 
Um, she really wanted me to knit something for her. She wanted originally the folklore cardigan, but I, I wasn't excited to knit that. And when I saw the book club cardigan, I was like, I love the design. I would really like to make one for myself, but if you want, I will make it for you first and then I will make one for myself. That way I can see like what I can do to improve mine, maybe. <laughs> maybe that's a bit mean. I don't want to be mean, but yeah. Anyway, this is the progress that I've got since last time. I don't remember exactly where I was. I think I had cast on the back panel, but that was maybe it. Um, so I've since joined, or like I've done the left shoulder and I've done the front, the right shoulder, and I've joined in the round. And I've got like three centimeters, I think, of the body. This looks like it's really intricate, but it's honestly so easy. This is my first cable project and honestly, it's not so bad. Uh, I was really worried that I was going to struggle with it, but it's been great. So you have a moss stitch section in the back is running all the way down here. And then you have those two cables surrounding a diamond uh, motif and inside the diamond it's like kind of kind of most stitch but it's not the same as here because here it's like two pearl stitches and then two knit stitches and here it's just one knit stitches and one pearl stitches one pearl stitch anyways uh, this is the v-neck cardigan so you can see maybe that I've got some increases to shape the v-neck. It's quite a, it's not a very deep v-neck, so I know that some people have made some modifications for that. Um, I hadn't really realized how like kind of small the sh the v-neck was, uh, so I think I was already past that when other mentioned it. But I think my friend will still like it. Maybe for the one I make for myself in the future, I will make it a bit more of a deep v-neck. There's also been a lot of people in the group chat that have made some modifications for the shoulder. So, as you can see, the diamond pattern doesn't really line up here with the back panel. Some people have added a full cable here, which looks gorgeous. Uh, I had already cast on when they showed their like what they had made and how they had made that modification. I think if you go on the Ravelry project pages you'll see uh, the person, I think there's at least one or two person who've done that modification. Sandra actually is following that person's modification for hers as well. She's added that um, cable and so you can use that Ravelry project page if you're interested in how she made that but it looks so stunning. Uh, I would definitely make this for my future one, I think. But I think it still looks good like this. Some other people have just made this first, like, diamondy shape a little bit more wonky so that it kind of fits here more, uh, which is a modification that I could have made, but I was, you know, I was like, I'm just going to follow the pattern for this one at first. The... <laughs> Knitting the body is definitely taking a while now. I've timed myself and for one, the wrong side row, I do it in about 15 minutes. But for the right side row, I do it in about 20 minutes when there's all of the cabling to do, which there isn't always. Um, so yeah, I've got like three rows that I can make in an hour. So. <laughs> Definitely takes a while, but I'm, and also I'm kind of worried that I'm not going to have enough yarn. I have got, this is the one that I'm using right now, the, the cable needle. <laughs> and then I've got three more skeins of the Ulysse and three more skeins of the Berenice, I think. And I still have to finish the body, do the pockets, do both sleeves and do the button band. So we'll see. <laughs> I would probably have to buy uh, more. Um, and also some people have had issues with the sizing of the sleeves. They've actually picked up for like one or two sizes 
up from what their recommended pickup rate is for their size. So I haven't reached that point yet. I think I'm gonna wait until I finish these two or like either one of these two skeins and then I'll probably need a sleeve and I'll see if I size up or not. I do have to check with my friend whether she likes a tighter fitting sleeve or not. I think the numbers for those sleeves are not wrong in the pattern it's just that it's a more fitted sleeve but the body is quite fit it's quite boxy and so some people want to have a boxy sleeve rather than you know those two thing combined together uh, if that makes sense i love the stitch definition that this yarn makes this is i think stunning i'm really happy with that um, this is my first time using Bernice by um, Deron Natura. I have used, I, and I have had in my stash Ulysse, which I haven't used yet, but I will soon. And I'm using Penelope by Deron Natura for my Elder Soda. But I think this combination is really lovely, and I'm excited to try either Gilead or Cyrano from my boyfriend's sweater in the winter. But we'll talk more about that. In a little while. I think that's about everything I wanted to talk about for the book club cardigan. This is my first uh, pattern by Sari Nordland but it's been really great so far. The instructions are really clear and there's some charts but it's not too overwhelming. There's just one chart for the you know uh, back panel and then it's just the main chart that you have to follow for you know the uh, front shoulder, left shoulder, the front shoulders and then you know the rest of the body and there's a good mix of written instructions but the, again they're really well written so there's been no issues with that. I cast this on on the 1st of June which was the start of the knit along and so we are like oh, one month and one week in and I've got you know I've reached the body which I'm really pleased with the progress. I will not finish this by the end of the knit along for sure but I'm hoping to maybe have this done by the end of August because, as I said, it's a gift for a friend and I would like to knit more things for myself <laughs> soon. <laughs> but it's been really nice to knit on this and honestly I've been really excited. I haven't really uh, worked on this during the week. I've mostly worked on this during the weekends. Uh, so, you know, taking a break during the week and then coming back to it on Friday evenings and then every day uh, of the weekend has been really, really lovely. Okay, I think this is gonna be a long one, so I hope <laughs> I hope it's okay. I've got just one wisp whip to talk about, and then we'll go on to acquisitions, and then the give giveaway stuff. The last whip that I've got to show you is another pattern by Sarah Nolan, but this one is a test knit. I'm test knitting the Antoinette camisole in size three for her. Uh, this is a lovely, you know, very simple but kind of detailed pattern. It's got um, a deep V, you know, you've got those two triangles at the front and then at the back what makes this a really elegant feminine uh, design is the I-cord bows at the back, which I really love. So I'm using Les Petits Points Parisiens Pure Soie, which is 100% silk, in the colorway graphite, or graphite. Uh, this is 400 meters for 100 grams. Uh, I've got two skeins, so I'm using one which I'll show you. Um, I'm hoping not to use this second one, but you know, if I have to reach into it for... That was the cat. Okay. <laughs> um, if I have to break into it for like to finish off the body, I will, but I'm hoping not to have to. Um, so, what I've got so far, I cast this on maybe a week ago. And um, I don't know how well you'll be able to see because this is one of the stops that you knit the triangles and then the back panel and then you drain the round. But until you have um, knit the eye cord edges, you don't really have, or like the eye cord straps, you don't have a lot to show. Um, yeah, this is really hard to show. This is. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to show you that. I'll show you on me because I'll try it on. Um, and I'll pop up a picture of, hopefully of the finished uh, result. So 
I am using 4mm needles uh, to reach gauge and the pattern recommends 3mm needles. I'm a tight knitter. I think Sari is a very loose knitter. For the book club cardigan, I didn't mention, I always forget. For the book club cardigan, I'm using 5mm needles and I think it's supposed to be 4mm needles. And honestly, I think I could have gone for 5.5. But you know. Um... You start by knitting the back panel, which is um, kind of a straight thing. It flew by and then you knit one triangle and then you repeat the exact same instructions for the second triangle. You use a provisional cast on for these, for the triangles. I used the Judy's Magic Cast On um, provisional cast on for this because that's the one that I know. Um, I know that there are other methods with like a crochet hook and stuff. I didn't want to use that. I think the uh, Judy's Magic Cast On, once you get the hang of it, it's really fine. Uh, I'm always a little bit worried about when it comes to you know picking up these stitches whether that will be complicated or not. So we'll see when I actually do that, but yeah. And then I co connected everything in the round and I've knit like, I think 12 centimeters. Oh, this is really hard to show you. I've knit like 12 centimeters of the body. Um, let me try it on. So, I think that this is basically <laughs> what it's gonna look like. This looks to be very big, but it's just because the back is rolling off i think yeah i mean it's not gonna be tight fitting but it's not gonna be too loose i think that looks really good so deafness is running up until the 22nd of august no of july and i think i'm making good progress because i'm knitting this on four millimeter needles uh, and you just have to finish like basically the top part of the camisole. You don't have to knit the whole body. Uh, I would like to finish everything before the end of the test knit because I think it's, um, you know, if I can, I might as well. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is, I think maybe after, like next weekend, like I'm going to knit on this on the body during the week and then on Saturday, next Saturday. So like tomorrow for you because <laughs> I'm filming this the weekend before. Um, I'm hoping to do the eye cord straps and the eye cord bows and do all of that so that I just have to finish the body afterwards. Um, and you finish it with like a double folded hem, I think, which I've never done before, so that would be interesting. And I just have this much left of the first skein, so let me weigh this. I'm like halfway through the skein, so I've got 50 grams left. So yeah, I think whenever I finish, like if I've got 20 grams left, I think that's enough for the eye cord edges or like eye cord straps again. Um, and then I'll use whatever I've got left for the body. And if I have to break into, you know, this second one, I will. But I don't think I would need to for much, so we'll see. I think this is going to be really pretty. I'm a little bit worried because I'm rowing out a little bit. I think it's because of the yarn. Um, but hopefully blocking will fix it. I do have my swatch actually that I can show you. It's funny because this has way more variation I think than it actually does in the camisole, which I'm excited. I'm like I'm happy about. I don't know. Maybe it does have. This is very shiny, by the way. It's much much more shiny than pure silk by knitting for olive. Or like actually I can show you the I mean this is double strands of silk but still I think I can kind of tell that this is shiny and this is more matte which I'm I like the matte finish more but I think that for a camisole like the one that I'm knitting it's gonna be perfect and I think the eye cord bows in the back are gonna be so cute so excited uh, I'm a bit worried about how to knit that I haven't really looked at the instructions yet but hopefully it will be fine. There were a few issues with the some of the instructions, but obviously this is 
while you were test knitting it too, this will be fixed. Okay, let me talk about some yarn acquisitions and some swatches that I've made for my future cast-ons. If you've seen my summer knitting plan video, you'll know that I've made a kind of big order from Knitting for Olive for some summer yarns. So I had the Pure Silk, but I also bought some Cotton Merino in three different colorways. I bought Cotton Merino, which is 70% organic cotton and 30% extra fine merino. It is 250 meters for 50 grams, uh, so it is a fingering weight yarn. I have got three colorways, which are very neutrals, not very summer appropriate, but I really wanted some neutral colors. Um, this first one is oatmeal, which is like a beige, kind of turn, you know, brown, but like very, very light brown. Then you've got mole, which is a brown, a really pretty brown. And then you've got thundercloud which is a very like slate gray, kind of black sometimes, um, which I was really excited for. And I've already made two swatches with these two. I've got like two patterns in mind for the brown mole colorway, but I really want to cast on for uh, another top with these. And I want your opinion on which one I should cast next. The first one is the, both of these are by the same designers actually, but the first one is the Petrol Drop Camisole by Florence Miller and this is my swatch. I, please do not judge me for making tiny swatches, but this is the uh, design of the Petrol Drop Camisole, which I think looks really pretty. Uh, I'm reaching row gauge, which is, which is so I'm, I've knit five centimeters and it's the right row gauge for five centimeters. And then for the stitches, I've actually cast on seven more stitches um, using the recommended little size. So I'm using three millimeters because when I started to knit it with 3.5, it was too see-through and I couldn't even reach gauge then. So I decided to um, see how many stitches I needed to reach gauge, which is, you know, seven more stitches. Uh, but then, I think if I were to knit a size up, there's quite a big gap in the number of stitches between the size 3 and the size D. Uh, so I'm not sure yet which size I will knit. Like, do I knit size 3, but it will be more tight fitting. But then again, it's for a 95 centimeter bust, and I've got like a 90-92 centimeter bust. So I don't know. Um, and then the size up is 105 centimeter, but then that would be, you know, even if I, if my gauge isn't right, I'm worried that it will be too big. And this is a bottom up construction. So I, even if I try it on, I might not see how it looks on me, you know, before long. And I don't know whether I could just maybe, <laughs> if I'm brave enough, uh, just cast on it. A number of stitches stitches in between those two sizes. I don't know, I haven't decided yet, which is also one reason why I haven't cast this on yet. Also because I have the test knit to finish first. But I think that looks really pretty. I'm really excited, especially in this color. I think it's great. And then the second one, I don't know how much you're going to be able to see because my swatch is tiny. But this is for the Mixed Rib Cami by Florence Miller, which is her latest release, which looks gorgeous. I want to use it uh, to knit the thundercloud colorway for this and this is knit with the correct number of stitches on the correct uh, needle size or the needle size recommended as it, and as you can see this is clearly not 10 by 10 centimeters I mean I've done again like the other one I've done like half um, the amount of rows um, but I think I'm reaching row gauge no I think I'm off even in the row gauge by one centimeter but mostly I'm off in the stitch like the uh, stitch numbers I think I would need at least six stitches more to reach gauge but again uh, when I sized up uh, it just looked too see-through I think even here it looks a bit too see-through I think because my pearls are quite loose so I think I will 
I think for this one the number of stitches isn't that different uh, in between the size 3 and size 4 so I'm thinking about knitting the size up for this one. So I might cast this one on first. First of all because this is a newer design so I feel like it's kind of um, motivating to be one of the first to knit that design but also because I'm fairly sure that this will fit me better than whatever I decide to do for this. I'm a bit more worried about this one. But I'm excited about both and they're gonna be definitely on my to knit list this summer. Um, for sure. Like, even if I mess it up, I'm gonna at least try. But if you have an opinion on which one I should knit first, let me know. And then the last swatch that I made, <laughs> I've been in a really swatching energy kickoff thingy lately. Um, this is a much better swatch. <laughs> this is much bigger. This is actually even a tiny bit too big, but that's okay. This is uh, two strands of Ulysse by Dera Natura and Knitting for Olive uh, Soft Silk Mohair. So I can show you the yarns. This is not going to be for a summer knit, by the way. I'm starting my fall knitting already. <laughs> This is uh, the colorway Amarante, so this is the Ulysse, which again is a sport weight. And soft silk mohair, you know it already, this is 30% sil uh, silk and 70% mohair, yeah. And this is in the colorway Bordeaux, and I think these two together looks really pretty. It does have a bit of a mild effect, because I think the mohair is a bit... Uh, darker than the Ulysse, but I think it looks really pretty. It is very JP. I swatched for the Charlie Pullover by Morica Knit using I think two needle size up from the recommended needle size and this is like 11 centimeters by 11 centimeters so a tiny bit bigger than it's supposed to be um, and it is pretty dense fabric uh, I could potentially go up to 6mm needles, but I think I like this, and if the pattern ends up being a tiny bit bigger than intended, intended and it's supposed to have like 10 to 15 centimeters of positive ease, I won't mind. I would rather that than it being too small, which we've learned. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I might cast this on as soon as my storm sweater is finished. Or something else. But I think this. I think this. Depends if the pattern I'm thinking about comes out soon or not. But we'll talk about that when I've got the yarn for it which is coming. I may have bought more. Okay, that was it for my future plans, for my acquisitions and all of my finished objects. I'm really excited about everything that I've got on my needles at the moment. I really want to finish all of them. <laughs> But obviously um, I don't have the time for that. So my priority is definitely the test knit that I want to finish soon. And around the time I have to finish the test knit, I'm also going away for a week, not on holidays. I'm going to be working still, but I'm just not going to be working from home. Um, but it does mean that I won't be able to knit on everything that I've got because I've got too many. So I want to finish hopefully the camisole before I leave. So that way it's you know, done, I don't have to bring it with me unless I want to wear it. Um, and then I think I'm going to take my book club cardigan because I do want to, you know, uh, make progress on that. And then either I, I think I might bring um, yarn for either the petrol drop camisole or the mixed rib cami so that I have like a camisole to knit on, something kind of easy. I mean, this is not easy, easy, but... Uh, because this is a mix of um, twisted rib and uh, regular rib and this is lace so it's not like the easiest things in the world but I don't want to bring a full-on jumper like the storm sweater but I don't think I will have that finished anyways we'll see uh, if you're interested in what I'm gonna bring do follow me on Instagram so that you can catch up uh, more you know regularly than here on YouTube but let's talk about the giveaway I really wanted to do a giveaway for 
you know to thank you for subscribing to my channel and for watching my videos it really means a lot to me um i'm just doing this because i enjoy it i really enjoy making the videos i really enjoy talking about knitting and it's lovely to see that uh, some some people <laughs> enjoy watching my videos and interacting with me um so this is a giveaway that's going to be available for everyone internationally um i don't really care how much the shipping cost will be i just want to uh thank you so there'll be two prizes that you can win i'll show you the prizes first and then i'll tell you how you can enter so the first uh prize that you can enter to win is this project bag which is similar to the one that i showed you before it's just a tiny bit smaller but it's perfect for like summer knitting or for um, a beanie or even like the beginning of a sweater it doesn't have any pockets inside but you can see the lining is really really pretty I really love that and I'll also throw in um, this um, what's it called like smallish purse it's not a purse but you can like you can put your stitch markers and like your small knitting notions in this uh, that you can take with you in this bag which I think is really cute D like my friend added this in the uh, order that I made I paid for everything except for this but I thought I would uh, gift it to you guys and yeah this is the store Mercury Studio which I'll pop in the bag as well and yeah you can enter to win either this bag or you can enter to win a sock set by a French hand dyer. So this is the same hand dyer, um, L'Atelier Tinture, which uh, for this yarn. This is a sock set. So this is Petit Peton Merino 75, which is 75% extra fine merino and 25% nylon. Um, and this is in the colorway C2313. It is 120 grams, so this one is 400 meters and this one is 80 meters, which I think is fairly common for sock sets. Um, and this feels really lovely and I love the colors. I bought this for me originally in a uh, yarn festival last year, but I thought this would be a great, you know, uh, product to gift you. So... In order to enter, I would just like you to drop a comment down below. Um, either you can uh, ask me questions that I will answer in a future video, in like a knit and chat video, or you can tell me uh, which pattern you really wanted to make uh, this year that you've either started already, finished already, or that you're, you know, really thinking about starting soon, like one pattern that has been your dream to knit something that you've been seeing for a long time or something that you fell in love with when it was released uh, i would love to know and if you want to enter for one of these specific uh, prizes let me know in the comments whether it's for the bag or for the sock set and if you don't say whichever one of those do you prefer i will just choose depending on what the other person maybe has said or i would just do it randomly if um, either of those two person people have not mentioned what they prefer. Um, I will not contact you directly, so I will announce the winners in a in my next knitting podcast, which will come out in about a month. Um, so if anyone messages you, it's not me, do not answer uh, and stuff like that. And yeah, you... You can enter whether you're in the US or in Europe or in Australia, wherever you're from. I would love to have you participate as well. And yeah, I would also appreciate if you don't even want to participate. But uh, if you want to, if you have some questions that you want to ask me, I would love to know. I will drop also a like question box on Instagram in a couple of days for, as I said, a future video, like a knit and chat video, if I've got enough questions. Honestly, I don't know if many people will ask me questions, so if that video never comes out, it's because I've had like two people ask me questions. <laughs> so I think that's it. Thank you so much for subscribing to this channel. I hope you've enjoyed this very long video, this very chatty one. Um, hopefully I will have one finished object 
next months, maybe two, but don't like I'm a very slow knitter, so I might I will not have a finished object every single month, and don't feel pressured to have finished object um every once like every month. Uh, I think knitting is a slow craft and it's really enjoyable as a slow craft. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.